you share with, the, with those around you. Because of your generosity and giving, we are able to support ministries abroad, in our own country, in our community, and in our fellowship. Through prayer, we have decided to help Lauren, Levi, and Harden for the last six months to give them a little financial relief. Through the hospital and stay in holidays, and during the stay in the hospital and holidays. We always pray we are doing what Jesus would do. Mm -hmm. And that's a statement from Robert and Jimmy and I. Mm -hmm. So keep that in your, in your prayers. Let's go to the Father in our prayer. Thank you for this meeting. Thank you for this congregation, for the spirit that we have and, and the sincerity that we have. We, uh, we love you, Father. We love your Son. And I'm going to close with part of Philippians 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness know to known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything but prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Good morning. morning. Fall is a beautiful thing. Fall is a beautiful thing. <coughs> Someday, by and by, all of God's singers are going to go home. Could be convenient this time. <laughs> what a song of delight in the city so bright. We'll be watching the heavens fair dome. How the ransom will raise happy songs in his praise when all of God's singers get home. When all of God's singers get home, whenever a sorrow will come, there'll be no place like home. When all of God's singers get home, as we sing here on earth, songs of sadness or mirth, there's a foretaste of rapture to come. But a joy can compare with the glory up there when all the God singers get home. When all the God singers get home, when never a sorrow will come, there'll be no place like home when all the God singers get home. Having overcome sin. No tears, no tears. 
tears up there, no tears in heaven will be known. The glory is waiting, waiting up yonder, where we shall spend an endless day. sacrifice made for each of us. Help us as we gather around your table that we clear our minds of the things of this world and we remember the death that was given for us. Please help us, Lord, to do these things in accordance to your will. Help us, Lord, to let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you. We ask you, Jesus, and our Holy Spirit to intercede, to better interpret our words to our Father in heaven. We ask these things in your Son's precious name. Amen. 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 It's that time. <laughs> Light that fire. Y'all ready to light a fire? Yeah. Let's get yeah. on with it then. It'd be convenient. Let's sing, let's sing this good song. <laughs> Yeah. 
Thank you. What's that first thing up there? Wow! How about that? Spelled backwards. Wow! <laughs> Mr. Gary told me that if you turn it upside down, it spells mom. Right? Yeah. Uh, if you haven't been coming on Wednesday night, one of the things, the benefits that we get by this uh, uh, video, The Chosen, is to be able to see because we read these scriptures about miracles, we, we're able to see the reaction of people. We, we can read them, we're going, mm. okay. But the reaction of the apostles and of the people that are healed, these miracles that, that are done, and it really, it helps to place me there. You know, I like to read the scripture and try to get right there. You know, uh, have you thought about wow moments in your life where God has intervened. We have a wow moment today. Whenever we see Madeline Grace that we waited for, and she is here. Wow! That's it. When I saw her, I thought, wow, how precious is that? Baby Harden. Wow! Can't wait till he's coming. Yeah, but wow, all the all the moments uh, that maybe in your life. So that's what we're going to talk about today is Wow, when God stepped in or stepped on in your life and made you understand, I'm here, I am God, God has a way, doesn't He, of getting our attention? The world says, oh, it just so happens. It just so happens that baby heart and leg. Well, thank goodness for medical people and uh, people that are able to do things and inventions that are made. And I'm, I say, wow, God. So today we're looking at the word wow, and I got the definition of wow is expressing astonishment, amazement, or admiration. We're going to look at how God acts in our lives and leaves us, me, saying wow. Luke chapter 5, verse 4, and we saw this a couple weeks ago in the video. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out to deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let the nets down. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they begin to, to sink. In the video, you should see the actor portraying Peter and Andrew on that boat as they're, they're, they're pulling these nets. He hollers at Zebedee and James and John, and you should see them. They're running full sprint. And the joy that they have, wow, it's such a moment. Peter, you know, bless his heart, he needed this. And a lot of times, God does things in our life that it's, yeah, that we need a wow. There is that moment in our life when things happen that we go, wow. Go next slide. Okay. Wow. Okay, we're going to read another one. Luke chapter 8. Now when Jesus returned, a, a crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. Then a man named Jairus, a synagogue leader, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house because his only daughter, a girl of about 12, was dying. But Jesus was delayed. And he heals a woman that touches his garment. While Jesus was still speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader, and said, Your daughter's dead. He said, Don't bother the teacher anymore. Just leave him there. She's dead. So hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, he says to Jairus this, the father, don't be afraid, just believe and she will be healed. When he arrived at the house of Jairus, he did not let anyone go with him, in with him except Peter, James, and John, and the child's father and mother. Meanwhile, all the people were wailing and they were mourning for her. Jesus said, stop crying, stop wailing. She is not dead, she's just asleep. And what did the crowd do? He said, they laughed at him. <laughs> knowing that she was dead. But he took her by the hand and said, My child, get up. Her spirit returned, and at once she stood up, and then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. 
Her parents were astonished, but he ordered them not to tell anyone what had happened. Why? Why was he doing that? He keeps saying, why was he doing that? Well, because the crowds were just overcoming him where he couldn't hardly teach. You know? So Peter, James, and John, they had seen this and they experienced that in her parents. You got to know, they're like, wow, this is truly the Son of God. This is truly the Son of God. Reading on in Luke, and by the way, Luke was a physician and he was an investigator. He says at the beginning of the book of Luke, he says, I investigated. You know, he talked to people that were there. All right, Luke, about eight days after Jesus uh, said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him, went up on the mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, and when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, uh, as, the, the men were, as the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And then it says he did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them. And they were afraid. The apostles were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves, did not tell anyone at the time what they had seen. So Jesus... He takes Peter, James, and John with him, the big three, and they experience this. Can you imagine? Can you put yourself there? Can you imagine? A voice speaking out, this is my beloved son, you listen to him. Peter got all excited and he offered to make uh, three shelters, you know? And that's when they heard that voice of God himself telling them to listen to Jesus, his son. Wow! Again, you know? You gotta know this. Can you believe we're following the Son of God? Sometimes the wild moment comes in the form of a different way of thinking. We think that we know what God wants in our life. We think that we know what God wants us to do, but it is not really what God wants, but rather what we want. It's what we want. Such as the apostles James and John's mother going going to Jesus and asking him, said, uh, would you mind, can my son sit on the left and on the right, my two sons, can you do that? You know? She's thinking that Jesus is going to rule an earthly kingdom and she wants her son to be in prominence. And you gotta know the sons were like, that's right, mom, good job, mom. Understand that they're asking uh, what they're asking for. That's what Jesus said. You don't really know what you're asking for, boys. You really know. And, and later he tells the disciples that if they want to be great in the kingdom, they got to be least. What? If, if we want to be great, we got to be least. If we want to be great, we got to be a servant. Different thinking, folks. Wow. Right after being told about this upside down kingdom, John informed Jesus that he said, yeah, and again, he's kind of puffed up. He said uh, uh, he has some newfound uh, power now. Jesus, uh, uh, John informed uh, Jesus that he tried to stop a man from casting out demons in Jesus' name. Because Jesus, he's not one of us. He's not one of us. And he expected an Adam boy. Good job, John. But he was told what? If he is with us, He's not against us. Leave the man be. Let him be. Again, John got to scratch his head. Wow. Different teaching here. Different teaching. Next, Jesus sends messengers out ahead as he's going to Jerusalem. They're going through Samaria. The Samaritans really didn't like the Jews, you know, because they, they the Jews said you got to worship in Jerusalem, and, and the Samaritans had their own place to worship up on the mountain. And so they hear he's coming. And so the village says, 
You know, we don't want him coming here. And James and John, maybe because uh, this angered them, maybe because they're still reveling this idea of having power, they offer to call down fire from heaven. You want us to call down fire from heaven to destroy this village? And Jesus, he rebukes them for this attitude. Wow. Is that really? They didn't get it. This man. Next, John learned that God really is worthy uh, of my praise. In uh, Mark chapter 14, John learned that God really is worthy of, of my praise. Jesus took Peter, James, and John off by themselves to pray at the Garden of Gethsemane. And they uh, retreated. He just went up by himself. And he comes back to them. Not once, they're asleep. He comes back again. They're asleep again. He tells them to watch and wait. They're asleep again. The third time he goes, and he says, wake up, because my time is now. My time is ready. That's I'm fixing to go. And they're going, wow, really? This is it? Jesus, suffering on the cross, he's hanging on the cross and uh, about to die. He looks down and sees his mother, and he sees the apostle John. And he says, woman, behold your son. And to John, he says, behold your mother. Effectively saying, John, take care of my mother. He's worried about things of the world. He's dying. He's in excruciating pain, and yet he's worrying about others. He's worried about his mother. How, how does he do that? Wow. Because he's the son of God. Okay, so what about you? <clears throat> you know, when uh, I said something Wednesday night about it in Georgia, said, uh, yeah, I had a wild mo moment. Said, Laura was uh, in a car wreck. And she said, I was at the bakery and I heard about it. And she said, I ran down there, ran out of my sandals. <laughs> Trying to reach down there. And this car is destroyed except where Laura was and the kid. Laura, listening to that, she said, I tell you what, after that, after I saw what God did to protect us, I said, I need to be baptized. Wow. Another wow moment. So have you had a wow moment? You're probably sitting there. Eight years ago, we're having a service. I'm not here. I'm in Florida. Having a service, and Max Harper stands up and says, I just got a text. Jerry Harris has had a heart attack. And they're, they're, they're racing him to a hospital in, in Granbury. <clears throat> and immediately the church prayed. Some of you were there that day. And you prayed about it. And uh, when I heard about it, I got a call and I heard about it. I called uh, Laura Williams, Laura Hicks Williams, Sid, my good friend Sid's sister, and because I knew she was a heart cath nurse in Granbury, and I, I said, Laura, I want to know, how's, how's Jerry? She paused. Jimmy, he's, he's not going to make it. We, we, we tried to tell, let's just keep him here and keep him comfortable. He's really not going to make it, but we're sending him to Baylor. And I prayed about it. There he is. Tell me God is not great. He had the widow make and he survived. Tell me that we don't have a great God and that it doesn't kind of give me chills and I think about, wow! <laughs> you know, I, I, I sent out a text to my friends and I asked them, I said, tell me, tell me a wow moment. And some of them said, well, when you see a sunset, you're seeing a beautiful sunset or sunrise and you're going, wow. You know, God is such a great artist. You know, my wife being an artist, she says, you know, you can paint the sunset like it is, and people would say, that's fake colors. There's no colors like that. And I, yeah. And she said, yeah, there's no colors except what God's got. God's the great artist can make colors like that. Wow. Another one said, uh, when I see a rainbow, a beautiful rainbow, and I think, wow, and you got to know that Noah was that way. <laughs> When he saw that rainbow, he went, wow! Never had seen anything like that. One of my friends, Bob Lester, who's 
attended with us one Sunday, he and Kathy. He wrote me and he told me, I have seen, uh, he said, my daughter had twins and they were premature. They were born at Children's Hospital, a wonderful place, by the way. Children's Hospital, and uh, they were twins and they were below weight. They weren't given much chance to win, from your story to me. And he said, uh, we prayed about it. And you prayed about it. And they're 15 years old today. He said, wow, that's wow to me. My friend Sid wrote this. I have a good friend that went through life joking about everything. Once he made a promise to God that if his son survived, he would dedicate himself and his family to God. The son survived. And now he is one of the strongest messengers of God that I know. Wow! Locally, 10 or 15 years ago, our, our congregation, we were, we'd gotten up to having about 70 on Sunday. And, but as time went on, we were, having, <clears throat> we were having people in our congregation pass away. And our numbers were dwelling. And we did fishers of men. We did all kinds of mail outs. And we had door to door twice and uh, campaigns trying to get people to come. And I was preaching one Sunday morning, and by the way, if you're not here on Sunday morning in Bible class, we were talking about the Holy Spirit. I always pray to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, don't let me talk, you talk for me. You give me what to say. And that Sunday, didn't have it in my notes or anything, we're talking about the power of prayer. And I said, you know, we should start praying about God bringing us people, bringing us a number, bringing people to this church. And the, the men of the congregation picked it up. And every service that we had, they prayed that prayer, Lord, bring us couples, bring us young couples with kids. Lord, do it. And all of a sudden, bloop, 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 they started coming. And they continued to come. They continued to come. We still have people that are, that are passing away. But yet our numbers re Remain strong. Wow. So how do you respond to those moments that God has blessed you or God has corrected you? I've had that. One thing I want to suggest this morning is to write those things down. Write them down. When you, when you go home today, write down the blessing that God has given you to remind you of those wild moments that you've had in your life. Give God the credit. Use them as a motivation to praise God from whom all blessings flow. King David wrote many psalms. Psalms 8 starts out, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name. And that's a great song. And we need to work on singing that song. I asked Ollie about it. and. He, it was too late at night. He didn't respond. And I finally, I went back and I said, forget what I said. I want to sing How Great Thou Art. I want to sing the song How Great Thou Art. And I want to sing all four verses. We used to sing first, second, and fourth. And the third verse is the very important one that he sent his son to die for us. So what I want us to do, we're going to sing the invitation song right now. When we're ready to stand and sing our song, as we sing, lift your voices to God. <clears throat> You're singing out to God, and we're telling Him how great you are, how great you are, God. Look up to God as we sing that song in the chorus. And the chorus goes, uh, Then sings my soul. Your soul is singing. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. And that's our invitation this morning. Everybody stand if you would, and we're going to sing this song. Let it out, folks.
ready to uh, participate in the Lord's Supper. If you uh, did not get a communion cup when you came in, if you uh, just will raise your hand and we'll get one delivered to you. Uh, okay, we got somebody moving back here. All right. Um, this morning, as we gather to uh, gather, we uh, try to give a just a little look uh, at what the Lord's Supper means. Maybe make it um, a little bit more personal to us, uh, and uh, that's what we're going to try uh, to do this morning. I'm going to read from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians is a very interesting uh, book in the Bible. It's unique uh, in that uh, it has an answer to a letter that we don't have anymore. That letter has disappeared. It didn't make it in the transition through, uh, through the, the, the 2,000 something years or so. Uh, and so, um, we, uh, all we can guess about is, well, what must have been the question? And when uh, I taught first or second Corinthians, uh, some of the early times that I did it, um, I didn't do this, but on the most recent time when we did it here a couple of years ago, I asked everybody in the class, I said, how about writing out the, the questions that you think Paul received in the letter and ask him. And uh, most of the times, you could kind of see when he moved from one question to the next because it'll give you some kind of a, a, a segue in, into uh, what's going on. And uh, uh, in this particular case, with the Lord's Supper, um, we don't get one like that. And um, there's evidently many problems going on with the the problems that they were having with the Lord's Supper there. But I will read you, you know, the, uh, the part that I think will be most helpful uh, for us this morning. This is starting in verse 23 of chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is a unique memorial feast in that uh, the person that we're um, commemorating today uh, established uh, this, uh, this service. And he asked us to do it, and he asked us to do it in a certain way. So this morning, uh, as you uh, partake of the emblems, I uh, ask you to try to uh, give a lot of thought to uh, our Savior hanging on the cross and giving his life and then uh, going to the grave, and then uh, on the third day uh, rising, and now it's sitting in, uh, in heaven. Okay, if you would, let's uh, take our COVID cups, and sometimes these same as this one opened up pretty easy this morning. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful to be able to come today to commemorate your son's death, burial, and resurrection, and we Pray that each and every one who participated in this morning will examine themselves and um, ask questions of themselves and be sure that they're uh, right uh, in your sight. And if not, if they we can work on getting better and better every day. Father, we uh, ask your blessings on this bread, emblematic of your son's body, and we uh, thank you for uh, it and for the blessings that you promised if we follow after him. These blessed ways in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Let's pray again. 
Father, thank you as we continue this memorial feast for this fruit of the vine, emblematic of your son's blood shed on Calvary's cross on our behalf. Father, we ask that each and every one of us will do so, partake uh, in a manner that is pleasing in your sight and glorify your name as we uh, have this communion with, uh, with ourselves and with you. These blessings we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Anything that needs to be brought before the assembly before we dismiss. Yes, sir. Uh, we have a sign-up sheet for uh, the uh, Cotton Harvest Festival back here for snow cones. Uh, you say, well, I don't know how to make snow cones. We can show you how to do that. But uh, be sure and pick out a time slot and sign up and uh, see if you do it. Anything else? Uh, following this song, we'll be letting... Closing prayer by Brother Marlon Downs. Well, if there's ever, in this whole crazy world, if there's ever any people that ought to be happy, positive, keeping on the sunny side, it ought to be the Lord's people. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's keep on the sunny side. <laughs> it is a dark and a troubled side of life. There's a bright side to though we meet with the darkness and strife the sunny side we also may view so keep on the sunny side always on the sunny side keep on the sunny side of life it will help us every day it will brighten all the way if we keep on the sunny side of life, let us greet with a song of hope each day. Though the moment be cloudy or fair, let us trust in our Savior always, who keepeth everyone in his care. So keep on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. It will help us every day. It will brighten all the way. If we keep on the sunny side of life. Father, we come to you today thanking you for this awesome day that you give us. Just uh, remember everybody that was up there for our lady. for just a moment. You know, if you'll remember, I think it was this time last week, we had a lovely lady visiting with a name that I haven't encountered in my life very many times at all, in fact, twice. Her name was Felicity. Felicity. Beautiful, beautiful name. Well, coincidentally, we've got another Felicity with us this morning. And she's sitting right here next to Irelli, uh, uh Lorena Boutron's daughter, and I guess that you two go to school together, be my guest. They're friends. It's good to have you with us so this morning. And on our list, though, uh, Levi and Lauren, of course, they're, they're not here. They're taking care of little baby Harden. Uh, Jimmy Tyner's not here. Emily Stovall's not here. But if you would join me, we do have one, one birthday celebration here that we're going to take note of. And we're just so delighted that David and Judy, who used to be here with us all the time, still find frequent occasion to come and be with us and we're just delighted to have you with us today. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday dear David. Happy birthday to you. And many more. All right. Thank you. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.